Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to, to be here. My name is Ruben. I am a director of community in uh, Europe, so I flew all the way over to, uh, to San Diego to uh, welcome you all. Um, without further ado, I spent a, a few years at, uh, at Google as well, and I have a few horror stories that I'm not <laughs> going to share here, but um, it involves setting up a proof of concept for a large beer brewer with sub 400 high memory machines, and then went home for the weekend, and I left them turned on. And on Monday morning, I raked up a bill of 25K for that uh, particular proof of concept. So that was the first time I, uh, I encountered uh, the challenges of FinOps. And it was in 2019, and now we're four years later. Um, huge conference, and FinOps as a category. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to uh, Bruce and uh, Eric from uh, Google. And uh, please take it away. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Ruben. Hello, good morning, everybody. I'm Bruce, joined by Eric uh, with our Google FinOps practice, and we're delighted uh, to be with uh, our panelists here today, Leslie, Scott, and Wallace, uh, who will be sharing their stories on scaling cloud FinOps at scale uh, in their organizations. Now, before we get to those, uh, those stories, uh, what you're gonna find is that a common theme is that uh, many companies that are experiencing success in scaling cloud FinOps have an integrated strategy uh, and a framework they use to scale the capabilities. Next slide. This is our framework. We encourage you to uh, use a framework and consider uh, one such as this as you're building your cloud FinOps strategies. Start in the upper right, accountability and enablement. That's the governance function, not only the kind of skills and personas that you want to build within a FinOps practice, but the governance and the oversight, particularly one that effectively connects technology, finance, and business leadership to drive policies, controls, drive a cultural change and process change across the organization. Measurement and realization, well, that focuses on KPIs and success metrics. We usually see customers evolving from cost optimization related metrics to the development of unit costs and unit metrics, uh, which are a real strategic driver across many industries. Cost optimization we think of across three disciplines, resource optimization, pricing optimization, and architectural optimization. Resource optimization being right sizing, tiering storage, auto scaling, pricing optimization, management of variables such as CUDs and RIs and, and uh, savings plans as well as slot reservations. And then architectural optimization, well, driving microservices-based architecture to drive down unit costs and building frameworks so that engineering teams are designing from a cost well-architected framework. Planning and forecasting, well, that usually sees a lot of evolution, far more granularity involved both in the planning and forecasting processes movement from trend-based forecasting to driver-based forecasting, including machine-based uh, machine learning technology, uh, as well as um, moving from allocation-based P&Ls to consumption-based showback and chargeback. And then finally, tools and accelerators. Well, that addresses building an integrated tooling strategy, as well as leverage of uh, key areas of automation, automated tagging and tagging compliance, automated cost controls and budget alerts. So how does this uh, reflect in a journey? Eric, why don't you take us through that? So one of the most common questions many organizations and customers ask us is, you know, how and where do I get started if I want to embrace FinOps in my organization? In working with CME, Equifax, and SAP, their journey started with the Cloud FinOps Experience Lab. It's an opportunity for us coming together, as we heard from a keynote, it's really a cross-functional collaboration between IT finance, business leaders, and technology leaders coming together to have an open dialogue on what FinOps means to them. It's an opportunity to really have that shared responsibility, right? Bring that awareness to drive cost efficiencies and creating value for organizations. The truth of the matter is, Every single one of you, your journey is going to be different. And the way I, I, I see FinOps is not a destination. It's a transformation journey. 
you will continue to evolve as your business priority changes. And you will never be done with FinOps, right? It's like building your muscle memory. You'll continue to hone it, tone it, and improve upon it. In addition to always continue to drive your optimization efficiencies and creating value within your organization. So with that, we'll start off with Leslie Nolan from CME Group. Please tell us your role at CME and what was your FinOps journey look like? Sure. And thank you, Google, for having us up on the panel. And it's a pleasure to be up here with uh, some various team colleagues. Uh, so as Eric said, uh, Leslie Nolan with the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. For those of you who are unfamiliar with that, uh, we are one of the largest derivative exchanges in the world. Um, similar to Equifax, we are technology enables our markets. That's what allows trading to occur. Uh, we are very early on our cloud journey. We started um, really a partnership, well, we executed a partnership with Google back in November of 2021, which was really what kicked off and accelerated where we were going. Um, and, you know, uh, I had spent about 11 years at CME, and about that time I was asked to come and create a centralized practice within finance, so a little bit different, similar to your colleague. Um, and so we've been on this journey with a focus, I will say, on tooling, right, because there's lots of different options on the tooling. We've been focused on our operating model, and then lastly, also forecasting, right? We're in the midst, you know, in this migration, it is a challenge to try to forecast your costs going forward. And so that is a really a large focus and evolution that we're working through. And then lastly, I'll just say where we've seen success with the partnership with Google and uh, many of you out there is through teamwork collaboration, transparency to drive better business decisions, as well as drive and change the culture. So I'll hand it over to Scott, thank you. Uh, thank you, and it's uh, always tough following somebody who does such a great job, so same as uh, Leslie. I really appreciate Google's partnership and being up here with my colleagues as well. Very similar journey, and you guys heard a lot of us talk about it, uh, RJ and I talk about it today from the Equifax side, so I won't repeat that part of it, but you know, it has been a great partnership with Google. I think you know, as they, they touched on things on the journey, I do think managing you know, slot reservations in BigQuery in particular, getting into some specifics is some areas that were really important for us and that we leaned into as well as just really monitoring at a low level looking for anomalies and how to improve things in the environment. So just, you know, Leslie did such a great job just adding a little bit of more details into some of the things we were challenged with. And I think the other thing that's a prevailing thing that you hear a lot about is just really trying to ingrain it in the culture and the organization. So having seen that when my previous role and my title needs to be updated, I was a CIO. Uh, for Equifax, the global CIO managing the whole back office. Now I'm CTO for the USIS business unit. So now going into more of a revenue facing role and seeing how the disciplines that we built in the back office now are playing into uh, our products and services we're delivering to our customers and how we um, keep FinOps in mind with everything we do. And, I, and I'll touch on some things as we talk later around the M&A space and new product offerings, which make, make things pretty interesting. Thanks, uh, Google, for inviting us um, and with this great panel. Um, SAP is uh, one of the largest uh, application software company on the planet. Um, we've been in the business for five decades and building application software for um, all of the large enterprises in the world. Um, so I've been at SAP for over 10 years um, with very many different roles. But this cloud uh, transformation journey with SAP really started about 10 years ago when we wanted to uh, move a lot of our assets, a lot of our workload from um, on-prem data centers to the cloud. Um, SAP has literally transformed its business from an on-prem software company to a SaaS, primarily SaaS-driven software company um, in the last decade. Um, and we've been pretty successful if you watch our recent uh, 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 earnings announcements and everything, uh, you've seen how successful we have been becoming a true cloud company. Um, and this is not an easy journey, uh, to say the least. Uh, we've we've, we've um, gone through a lot of the uh, uh, painful um, exercises of moving a lot of the workload from our data centers, consolidating our uh, on-prem data centers, uh, we've been taking a multi-cloud approach from the get-go um, and start uh, with a lot of the cloud providers out there. Um, you know, Google has been our 
um, one of the best partners we've had in the last few years. Um, we've um, um, been working with uh, Google and its ecosystem very closely um, to transform our workload into the cloud. Uh, I'll get to some of the more details uh, with the panel. Um, and I also have a session that later in the afternoon uh, in this room talking about the specific challenges, um, the best practices SAP has taken on uh, in this journey. Thanks, Wallace. Okay, so Leslie, we've got a question just for you. Uh, tell us a bit more about how you establish the governance and oversight for your, basically your operating model for FinOps at CME. Sure, uh, thank you for the opportunity to talk about it. Uh, so I uh, agree with JR, right? FinOps, Team FinOps, right? Ted Lesso all the way, right? We gotta believe every single day, you gotta go to work and believe that you are doing the right thing, pushing it forward. So. Uh, you know, having a finance background and being asked to uh, come and lead a FinOps practice can be a little intimidating, to be very honest. And why it has worked and been successful is because of the collaboration that I spoke to. So when we created a governance, it was to create shared responsibility with technology, the business, and finance. We all have a voice in the decisions that are being made on the recommendations we take. Now, we have that luxury because we're very early in our process, right? But the goal was to get this in place so that we can scale um, as more and more of our workloads go to the cloud. Um, additionally, as part of it, our escalation is directly to the CFO, the CIO, and then our chief transformation officer. So like Wallace, uh, there, there's a CME session tomorrow that talks about the importance of getting executive buy-in, which you actually heard from um, Scott and his colleague RJ earlier today. So we'll be talking more about that, but the governance was so critical because everyone has a voice. And you break the silo that exists. It's not finance and FinOps and IT and FinOps. It's a shared practice, a shared culture that we are working diligently every single day at CME to kind of push to our organization so that the engineers work with us um, to ensure a successful cloud migration and, a, and management of the costs, to be very honest. Thanks, Leslie. So let's transition to Scott. I know, you know earlier on the uh, stage, you know, and one of the things that we we'll often hear for many FinOps practitioners, and actually one of the top challenges is how do I empower engineers to take action, right? And that's just based on the uh, State of FinOps report in 2023 and also in 2022. It was this exact same challenge. So I'd love to hear from you, Scott. What was, you know, Equifax's strategy to empower your engineers to really take those actions? Yeah, I think as we touched on a little bit earlier, it, it is um, making it visible first, getting the awareness. And I touched on it earlier that you know engineering teams love information and they want to be able to help. So I think one is shining the light on the problem and creating a, an atmosphere and a team where that culture is encouraged and people can work on that. So that was a big first step. And, I, and I, it was funny thinking about it after you know, get off stage then and sitting in this chair, I feel like I'm gonna fall over backwards. So <laughs> there's that little bit of excitement every moment, it's not normal. Um, but I do think the reward structure and ingraining that in the culture, I think one thing you probably saw a little bit from RJ and myself, but nothing says more than when RJ is giving an internal reward through our system or a spot bonus to someone on the engineering team from the finance team or vice versa. When you have that recognition and build that kind of reward, um, and I love how you said it, it's breaking the silos down, that's something that we really work hard on, and I think it's that building that culture across sourcing, finance, and the technology teams, it goes a long way, and I think a lot of engineers, you know, they really want to help the organization, so the visibility and the path to do that, and then getting rewarded for that, and the re recognition can even be in the CEO or SLT report and things like that happen, that really goes a long way. So some of those strategies, you know, we really, we really work on. You know, gamif gamification is an interesting one because you want it to be genuine, but you can't let it to get out of control. There's a negative side to that. There's some interesting competitors in the environment. So we have to watch that a little bit, but I do think the continued recognition, um, the visibility is something that we've done pretty well at Equifax to help drive that. Excellent, thank you, Scott. All right, Wallace. So what was, uh, you, you run a very complex environment, you run across multiple clouds, so how did you think about your strategy for FinOps 
particularly managing across different cloud environments? Yeah, one of the uh, decisions we consciously made from the early on, I would say six or seven years ago, we decided to form a central team. Uh, we used to call it um, multi-cloud center for excellence. Um, now we just call it the, the multi-cloud team. Um, we um, um, started incrementally solving the problem even before our lines of businesses starts to look at cloud cost closely. Because uh, a lot of the uh, five, six years ago, a lot of our lines of businesses are still in the stage of trying to move from their traditional data centers to the cloud. Um, and we've set that stage early on. Um, we wanted to tackle some of the most basic problems um, to, you know, whether it's negotiating a good rate or um, contract with the providers um, to managing the uh, commitments. Um, so those problems we started taking on very, very early stage. And then when we look at uh, the migration journey, we start to help uh, our lines of businesses to really tackle the problems of um, putting the right workload in the right place with the right sizing. Um, and it's, it's not an easy problem to do because uh, a lot of the businesses are not thinking about cost as the first order. Uh, they're thinking about how to get rid of the baggage, how to um, just run the cloud um, um, to, to, to get their business uh, easy and fast uh, to their customers, uh, to the end customers. Um, so at that, at that stage, we need to start um, really looking at the problems the customers, our, our customers and our application teams are facing. Um, and this is where we have uh, a very, very deep and good relationship established with every t application teams. Um, we've got to really earn their trust um, because we recognize in order to do any of the stuff successfully and in a cost-efficient way in the cloud, we have to earn their trust and that they, um, they're the owners, of, they're the custodians, I mean, we're the custodians of the accounts, but they're the owners. We, we have to uh, um, really earn their trust to uh, do the actual actions, to take the actual actions, to uh, uh, continue the cloud journey. Um, we, we call this a shared responsibility model, and this is something actually we learned um, from, the, from the security folks, right? Because uh, on the security side of the business, uh, everybody knows this is a shared responsibility model, um, you know, you've got to, you know, uh, take on those security challenges, but you've got to take on the actions um, yourself. For, for, for cloud costs, this is something new, but when we, when we reveal that to the application engineers, um, they quickly get it, and we can, uh, uh, we can start working with them very closely, hand in hand, to solve those cost challenges. Um. Thank you. Um, so I guess as, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, FinOps is a continuous journey. Um, it's never you know, ending. And I think the part of that is how do you continue to evolve based on your business priorities, your goals. So we'd love to hear from each of the panelists here. What's next on your cloud FinOps journey? Maybe we'll start with Leslie. Sure. So I'm going to go back to where we've been focused for the last year because, as you say, we are evolving. And Google has, as well as pointed out, been a great partner to help us with that evolution. We very much are following the one slide you put up. Uh, we at times crawl, sometimes we walk in certain things, and then we start crawling again, right? And so that is so much of the evolution. So our focus for next year is the same three things I highlighted in the beginning. It'll be forecasting, <laughs> it'll be the operating model, and it'll be tooling, right? We've had the benefit where we've, uh, we've built out a lot of our dashboards and Looker with, in partnership with the Google team, um, and that's how we're managing a lot of, well, our cost management today. So there'll be continued work with anomalies, recommendations, all the different things that will allow us to be successful as our cloud migration continues to scale, so we scale with it. Um, you know, operating models similarly. How do you have KPIs that you are measuring and actually working towards every mm -hmm. single quarter and you're publishing those results to get your wins, to, to be able to um, highlight what you're bringing to the organization. Right now, uh, you know, our, I was participating in an, an event uh, a couple of weeks ago, and our CIO said it best from a CME perspective. Today, we're trying to change our people, our processes, and our technology. So we are definitely, you know, it's hard right now. Um, and so, you know, having great partners, 
um, having the right culture, having the right mindset, um, and being excited for the challenges that the cloud will bring. Um, it is a journey, mm -hmm. um, and hopefully you guys aren't going to kick us off the path anytime soon. Some days <laughs> might feel like we're taking a detour, but you bring us back. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, you know, there's always something more you can learn and do, and this conference is a perfect example. So thank you all for coming and listening to us. Hopefully it's been interesting, and I'll pass it over to Scott. She's making it really hard to follow her. It's like, it's very tough. But I guess, you know, I, you said it really well. It, it is a journey, I think, you know, borrowing on a little bit of Ted Lasso. It's being curious. Um, there's things that work well and there's things that don't. And I think it's having the fortitude to stay with it, to, to learn what did and didn't work during the year. As you said, you know, forecasting is an interesting one where, hey, you have best intentions, you have a happy path to get new products deployed. It's gonna go well, but then when you look in hindsight, okay, those were delayed, we had problems. Now you had a extended testing, that cost a lot more than you planned when you originally did it. So how do you learn and build that muscle? I think that's a big piece for us. And I think the other part for us is you continue to expand the FinOps journey, both knowledge and in an enterprise, we're doing a lot of acquisitions. So as we have large scale M&As, that creates a new problem. You're bringing in a new company's culture into yours, and then how do you really educate and scale that? So it does put some of the things that we're building as foundational blocks to the test. Um, but again, I would say you're spot on. I mean, it's not easy. Like cloud transformation in general is not easy. Building this practice, which is always going to be changing as you bring in generative AI, as you bring in new technologies and new releases that Google has, how does your FinOps practice then now take that on? What are the nuances to those particular technologies or services versus what you already had? So creating that as evergreen, being curious and challenging and honest with yourself of what did and didn't work, I think those are some of the parts for us. And then the M&A part does scare the hell out of me. So <laughs> that's a different issue, but that's one of some of our challenges. Um, SAP continues to do M&A. <laughs> <laughs> we acquire a couple of companies every year, and this is one of the challenges we also have to deal with. Um, so we've gone through the big migration. We've gone through a lot of M&A. Um, you know, we've acquired many lines of businesses over the course of the last decade. Um, we're always learning about what to do and how to do this at the best. Um, We've, we've accumulated a lot of expertise in this journey, um, but I have to say we constantly have to reevaluate where we want to invest our money, our resource to solve the most critical problems we face. Um, for instance, we've already, um, we think we've done a really good job solving the uh, cloud um, you know, insights, reporting, um, and uh, identifying anomalies and all that kind of stuff. Um, but now we're on to the optimization game. This is right, uh, right now our, our, our big focus. Um, and there's a lot of challenges in optimizing your workload. It's, it's not easy. Um, you know, Google has been helping us a lot with um, you know, there are native tooling. And there's a lot of native uh, capabilities. They're also adding. Um, we're, we're trying to constantly evaluate the size of the opportunity when it comes to optimization, uh, where we want to um, invest more time and tooling. Um, and, and when I talk about tooling, it's, it's, it's not easy to um, either go to a third party uh, tool vendor or do it in house. It, it, it's, a, it's a tricky balance. You have to look at um, you know, how do you plug and play, right? Um, so there's a lot of that challenges where we're, we're looking at it as an engineering team uh, from the central team perspective. Uh, we're also working very closely with our lines of businesses application teams um, because we think they play a critical role. Uh, that they will continue to play a critical role. Um, some of the problems on optimization may be uh, pretty obvious, and we can attack that from the central team perspective. Um, but some of those application um, teams or uh, innovations or modernizations in the cloud environment can make those optimization problems go away completely, maybe in a year or two. Um, so we'll have to uh, uh, really evaluate that um, together with our application um, colleagues. Thanks, Wallace. Um, just, uh, you know, when I heard from the panelists here, I think there's really three key things, right, as, as you, they have shared. One is embrace the off journey early on. Um, you know, it's not an afterthought. Going back and fix your processes, your control later on 
is going to be very, very costly. Um, you know, we see FinOps as critical as security. Um, and I think that is a message that one, you know, have shared with many of the uh, panelists here. Second, it is an iterative journey, right? Take a crawl, walk, run approach. Um, it's not a fast man, it's not a sprint, it is a marathon, and continue to iteratively figure out where you are in the journey and go back and reassess again, right? There's always opportunity for you to continuously involve, evolve and drive more efficiencies. And finally, you are not alone on this, right? <laughs> I mean, the Fed Foundation has made it very clear, all of you here today, you know, leverage among the community members here, leverage partners, right? Um, there's a lot of us together, learning together as well. So thank you for the panelists uh, joining us today. Thank you. <laughs> so with that, Thank you so much. Can I get a huge amount of applause for the panelists and Eric? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Leslie, Scott, and Wallace for uh, for being here and for sharing your experience. I really appreciate it. So, and go meet the folks at Google at their booth in the exposition hall. So, thank you so much for uh, for joining us here in this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching that session. I'm sitting here in San Diego right after FinOpsX. We hope you join us next year here live 2024. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel and join the community. Get involved. Join the summits. Get in a working group. And don't forget to get FinOps certified. It's next year here in San Diego for FinOpsX. It's going to be twice as big. Come join the party. Come meet your people. Welcome home.